Hello, welcome back, it's Jonathan. And you're probably thinking, what the hell am I doing in my kitchen? Well, in Melbourne right now, we're in lockdown, so my usual go-to places for recording are no longer available, which means I had to either A, do it against the wall, do it in front of my computer, or set up in my kitchen. So anyway, with that out of the way, what I wanted to do is go ahead and get to you a video that I recorded back in 2019. Now, why the heck am I gonna give you a video that I recorded in 2019? Long story short, when I was recording for the Agora companies back then, we actually produced a video which was forecasting a crash in 2020. I actually go through the exact framework that we were looking at, which would bring on this crash. And I actually wanted to get that to you today. So if you wanna know the exact framework that I'm using to forecast the next Great Depression, which is gonna come in around six to seven years, well then this video is gonna be one that you're gonna watch. Now, I have to warn you, this video is extremely cringeworthy for me. We had, a, we had a, uh, a specific marketing strategy that we were doing back then to try and increase engagement and things like that in this video. So while I watch that video now, I go, it's a bit weird. There's a lot of important information in it and I really want you to take away that information and not get too carried away with what's actually going on in the video. So in three, two, one, hit it. Profit Watcher. I've heard your question. Will Australia fall into a recession in 2020 or not? It's a great question and one that I want to cover today. But first, if this is a topic that interests you, then do yourself a favor and smash that like button. And I say that because today, I'm going to share with you some information that you may not just receive anywhere else. Let's get to it. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh God, not another 2020 recession call. And I agree with you. Since the global financial crisis, it seems that every year has been the year that the world was going to end. If you've been watching YouTube, mainstream media, or even a selection of talking heads, then I know that you know what I'm talking about. For example, in 2013, we had an imminent collapse which was forecasted by David Stockman. We also had the Business Insider suggesting that Japan at the time was on the brink of disaster. In 2014, we had troubles in the Eurozone that was going to bring down the world and Argentina was about to default on its debt. And let's not mention that the Russian ruble was in free fall with catastrophic consequences coming to us all. I won't bore you by listing the events of doom forecasted through 2015 until today. And that's because each time they come, they were soon forgotten. It's a strange paradoxical, though I say we've been fixated on doom, yet meanwhile the markets have moved higher each year. So let me say right off the bat that this isn't going to be another run of the mill or run for the hill style video. As much as I'd love to do that, I mean I could get some awesome clickbait around that, I do believe that delivering that content to you would not do you any good. So don't worry, keep calm and watch on. Oh and if you haven't already, smash that like button. And let's get one thing straight. Unlike other commentators on this topic, that is the end of the world scenario, I've been studying, working with, teaching, and watching this play out over the last five years. While at the same time, we've been hearing the never ending doomsday story being played out for the last 10 years. And that's why when I talk about this topic, I talk with conviction. But I don't think I need to prove that to you. You just want the goods, right? So let's talk about them. First up, are we heading into a recession? All right, this is a tough one, and I'm going to say, I don't know. But don't mistake what I'm saying here. Whether we fall into a technical recession or not is one thing. After all, we've been recession-free for 27 odd years. But will the economy slow down and will the share market experience recession-like movements? That's highly probable. And the reason for me suggesting that to be the case lies in what I call the grand cycle. Now, if you're unaware of what the grand cycle is, it's a medium term cycle that averages around 18 years in length. Now, I'm not the one who originated this idea. It comes from the teachings of Henry George who died over well over hundred years ago. And then it was later adopted and then modernized by Fred Harrison. It was a cycle that was evident in the property market. And from my research, it's very clear in the stock market. And by stock market, I am saying that this cycle is evident in both the US and the Australian stock market. Now, I know right now that you're probably suffering from a short burst of information overload. If you are, just rewind and listen to that again. 
And when you get back to this point, don't forget to hit that like button. All right, I'm now going to show you what the grand cycle looks like. Take a look at the chart that's on your screen. This is the grand cycle and it averages 18 years in length. The cycle is divided into three parts. That's two parts of seven years, which are rising markets. And then the final part is four years of falling markets. And that's how we get our 18 years. Where we are right now is in the middle of the two parts of seven years of rising prices. If you want to know how we count this cycle, start your count from late 2011 to 2012 and then add seven years. No, you're doing that because that's when the cycle first started. And if you add seven years, that brings you up to around 2019, which is where we are today. So what we can expect to happen now is around 18 months of economic volatility, recession, and possibly even a stock market pullback. It's pretty cool, right? All right, so if you've just learned something new, go ahead and hit that like button. Now, if, you want to, if you're a bit of a skeptic, I can only guess what you're thinking, such as, that, you know, this is bogus, it doesn't work, this model doesn't make sense, it's probably even a scam. And to that, all I can say is this. If that's the case, then why is this model forecasting some kind of pullback into 2020? And now central banks and even the IMF are warning of the same thing. Now, if this model was used back in 2012, it would have provided you information foretelling that 2019 was gonna be volatile. There is one thing that always baffles me, and this was back when I was in financial planning. You see, I like to talk to business owners and I like to speak to them about the cycle and I was always shocked that businesses didn't use this information to their advantage. Heck, if I knew with some accuracy that we'd fall into recession, and if I had a business back then, I would have saved up 12 to 18 months of assets, you know, cash to pay staff, cover expenses, and even plan some aggressive marketing strategies. Now, granted, if we do go into recession, no doubt people will be laid off, and that's a pretty common thing. But it really beats me as to why people don't use this information to their very own advantage. All right, you've got an idea on the grand cycle. Now, I'd like to welcome you to an elite group of investors. So go and smash that like button if you haven't already. Now, you're probably wondering, what the heck does this cycle look like? And why should you believe in its accuracy? Well, today, I'm sharing with you stuff that no one else is going to share with you. Because if you honestly get value out of today's video, and I can see with the attention rate and the like rates that I'm getting, I'll go ahead and make more of these. So what I'm going to show you is how the last two cycles unfolded. These are the ones you may have lived through. That is the cycle that ended in 1992 and the one that we recently went through that ended around 2012. Can you see what happened during this period? Can you see how closely related each cycle was to the original map that I provided you just before? It's for this exact reason that I can say with conviction that a cycle such as the grand cycle, which has been repeating since the 1700s, may just be repeating itself into 2020. And that's why you can use this information to your advantage and do away with other technical indicators. Well done for making this far. So how bad is the recession going to be? If you want my honest opinion, I don't think it's going to be that bad. And I say that because many people are sitting on the sidelines waiting for it to happen. Also, this is not a credit-induced bust. This is not a 2008 style event. This is not a blood in the streets kind of event is what I'm trying to get at. Instead, it's probably just going to be more of a smoldering effect where any major decline in value will be sucked up by investors. You know, those cash heavy investors that are waiting on the sidelines for this. Now, what that looks like right now is really anyone's guess, but with history as I guide, we can expect a decline in assets, such as the value of the stock market, of around 25% over the next 18 months. Now, I wanna give you three pieces of information to help you not only survive, but also profit from the coming events. Step one, do what everyone else is doing and build your war chest. That is storing cash, actually stockpiling cash. If you need to be invested in the markets, try some defensive investments. And if you wanna take a punt on any runners that appear, Make it calculated and, and don't risk any more than 2% of your portfolio. Number two is, if you're the kind of investor that likes to buy and hold, use this as your chance to systematically invest in shares as they pull back. And if you want an added confirmation, wait for the shares to pitch a higher low 
on a weekly basis before buying in. This will lower your risk of trying to catch a falling ice, so to speak, or buying shares that continue to fall. And finally, number three, don't panic. Seriously, don't panic. The events that took place in 2008 will not occur over the next two years. How do I know? Well, look, I don't, but I'm going to back my opinion with over 200 years of data and make my decision on that. I'd much rather do that instead of basing my opinions on what I read in the news every day. Remember, common sense is not that common. And with all that said, I do hope you got a lot of information out of this video. It's a bit of a different to the normal, and I really hope that you learned something. And by the way, if you did, do me a favor and hit that like button. Share it with your friends, and if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. That's because 2020 is going to be a crazy year, and we can learn something from it. See you next time.